Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Early morning crypto talk, Bitcoin Brandon here. We're going to get started in a second. You guys are enjoying your weekend so far this Saturday morning. Charles. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Pamela. What's going on, Laron? Charles. Ah, you like Black Panther, huh? <laughs> Laron, I'm going to see it again tonight. Good morning, my foos. Good morning, Jeffrey. Good morning, Shane. Good morning, JJ. Yeah, Black Panther was awesome. We're seeing it again tonight. Oh, I'm not going to give any details. Um, all I'm saying is a great movie. You should go see it. <laughs> Good morning, Gerald. Good morning, Jeremy Keene. off here got a lot of work to do today and I apologize I did not do a late night crypto talk last night I got burnt out had to turn off the computer and just sit back and relax for a bit so let's see what we will cover this morning uh, let's see what do I want to start with oh yeah I forgot I didn't type this one in here but Here's a new problem. It's the problem of inheritance and asset transfer with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Yeah, so what happens, you know, how do you pass that money on to the next generation? How does that work? People have asked me that question a lot and I, and I haven't really had an answer other than <laughs> give your lawyer your, your, your password keys so if anything were to happen to you, they can pass it on to your family. But that's a good question. How does that happen? So let me put this link in the chat box. And I have to start by saying, as a disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor to be dispensing financial advice. I read the news. I share my opinion and suggestions. And you take that and do as you please. Now the market, let me hit the refresh button has been going up. We are now at a steady growth at $10,800 per coin. That is good progress. The top 10, actually top 20, is all green except for Tether and Litecoin. But the rest were all green. I'm not seeing really double digits in the top 10. Outside of Monero, Lisk, Icon, Verge is up 41%. 
Why? Pump and dump going on over there. 41% up is Verge. Let's see, 17% Sia coin, 88% Ucash. They just had a major drop. That was a pump and dump, and now it looks like it's going, they're doing it again on Ucash. Let's see here. Anything else major that's catching my eye? Double digits. Uh, Alon, 23%. Ken, 19%. Uh, Quant Stamp, 18% up. So the markets are looking pretty healthy over the last 24 hours. So that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. What's this? Yeah, Ucash is up the most, 88%. So let's go to how do you transfer your wealth? What happens to you if you pass away? I did read an article a couple months back where it was from the women saying, what do we do if we know that our nerdy husbands might have a whole lot of stuff stashed away and something happens to them? I don't know his password or all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Good question. So say what you will about the mainstream centralized investment assets classes. The process of inheritance and asset transfer for them is a lot easier than the emerging cryptocurrency asset class. This fact is entirely not lost on Michael Moody, a retired software engineer whose son, Matthew Moody, died in a plane crash five years ago. According to Moody, his son, Matthew, had been a Bitcoin mining enthusiast, having been one of the earliest people to mine Bitcoin. In a statement by Mr. Moody, he revealed that his son used to mine Bitcoin with a home computer back when it was still possible to do so. Mr. Moody has spent the better part of three years trying to get a hold of his son's Bitcoin, which could be worth thousands of dollars today at the very least. Mr. Moody has not had any luck in his efforts, due to the decentralized nature of Bitcoin blockchain. Only holders of the private keys of a Bitcoin address can gain access to the coins stored domiciled in the address without his son's private keys. Mr. Moody has been unable to access his son's Bitcoin wallet on the blockchain.info platform. This news brings up an aspect of cryptocurrency narrative that seems to have escaped the attention of many people amidst the hype and buzz that surrounds cryptocurrency as well as its increasing value. The question of what happens to a person's crypto assets after their demise is an important one. The decentralized nature of the blockchain on which cryptocurrencies operate means that once a crypto holder dies, his or her coins could potentially be lost forever. There is no central body that can adjudicate in the matter of recovering the coins owned by a crypto holder who has passed away. The problem of inheritance and asset transfer is an age-old one that has led to serious issues in the past, even for mainstream investment classes. However, while there are detailed laws that guide inheritance and asset transfer for asset classes like stocks and bonds, no such laws exist in the cryptocurrency space. The mode of operation of cryptocurrencies even make it virtually impossible to have such laws as control of crypto assets is firmly in the hands of the crypto holder. Commenting on the issue, Mr. Moody called for people to be better educated on how to secure their crypto assets not just for themselves, but for their future heirs as well. Now there are several methods you can use to ensure your crypto assets are safe and accessible to loved ones. For instance, at Hackers Congress 2017, entrepreneur and attorney Pamela Morgan's presentation, Cryptocurrencies Live Forever, You Won't, outlined several ways you can start preparing, leaving, leave your wealth as a gift to a worthy cause, a security makeover ensuring all seeds, backups, etc. are safe, and the formulation of a time machine mission in which your family can retrieve your private keys by going on an adventure. More information from Morgan 
on bequests and cryptocurrency can be found. Uh, they got some links here. The book from the attorney will go into more detail regarding inheritance and crypto assets. I need to take a mental note and really delve into this stuff. This is important information. With the cryptocurrency industry still in its infancy, it may take a while for many to come around to some of these realities. The focus of the many when it comes to the security of their cryptocurrencies is to keep them safe from hackers. According to Ian Purton, the CEO of StrongCoin, a cryptocurrency wallet service provider, people need to start thinking about their families and what happens to the cryptocurrencies after their demise. All right, when I, when I first started to study this, I came across um, a person who was advising saying that, you know, in this case, especially from a death or a divorce, you want to put, if you've got like a hard wallet or whatever, and cold storage, put in a, in a bank deposit box and the, all your passwords and codes and stuff in there and have strict instructions to your attorney, uh, you know, or in, or in your will on who gets access to that if anything were to happen to you. So there's clear instructions. There's a, a list of where you've got stuff. And this is for the cold storage stuff, not your day-to-day. -day. Because a lot of traders out there, things are moving so fast, it's not like they got time to prepare for all that. But it's, it's the coins that you have that you know, you're pulling out, you're going to hold on to them for 5 to 10 years. Even, even in an instance where your day-to-day -day operations... You got to have all of that stuff backed up. Your passwords, have it written down somewhere. Your wallet addresses. Have, you know, you, think of you are the bank, so you've got to keep records and then have your records in a safe place where your loved one can get access to it if something were to happen to you. You know, some I don't trust my wife with that information. She may run off with my mind. Well, yeah, I can't help you on that thing. But you might, you might want to have that happen. Like, my wife doesn't know nothing about any of this stuff. Nothing. She would have no idea on what to do or where to go. So I'm making sure I have instructions that she will be able to do, you know, whatever needs to be done. All right, so next article. That's a good one. Next article. Several states spearhead Bitcoin adoption in the U.S. So we've been watching this. I've counted three states now and even some cities. But this is starting to pick up speed in the United States. Remember I said it 2018 was the Empire Strikes Back? But the Empire has states in it that don't always like the Empire. They like to have their own state rights. And the states have been doing some things that have been more on the positive side of Bitcoin. Or they want to accept that Bitcoin is here to stay and they want to regulate it in such a way so that they get some taxes from it. So here's, did I, yeah, put the link in the article. Here's this article. U.S. states with positive attitudes have advanced towards Bitcoin legalization, a process that a growing number of elected officials consider inevitable if not desirable. Numerous crypto-friendly bills have been introduced, and some of them have received approval in committees and houses of state legislators. One wouldn't necessarily think of states like Arizona, Tennessee, and Wyoming as the backbone of a great nation's economy. How about pioneers of its future development? Start with Arizona. For some time now, legislators in the Grand Canyon State have been thinking how to facilitate residents receiving incomes and profits in cryptocurrency. If Bitcoin is good for ordinary citizens and businesses, it should be good enough for the state coffers. Local lawmakers have decided. Last week, Arizona got closer to accepting cryptos as legal tender for taxation purposes. Now, that's, a, that's important right there. They're calling it legal tender, meaning money, currency. Yet the federal government is looking at it as property, an asset. And both have different laws when it comes to taxes. So this is very interesting to see how this plays out. Because it's like 
they they make the laws, make the rules as you play the game. The, the, you don't have all the rules at the beginning. It's as we go along. So several bills recognizing coins as currencies have been making their way in the state legislature, as news.bitcoin.com reported. Two of them, SB1091 and SB1145, were aimed at regulating tax payments with digital currency. The SB1091 draft, sponsored by four Republican lawmakers, was endorsed by the Senate on February 8th with a 16-13 vote. After passing the Finance Committee in January, if the bill is adopted by the House, Arizona will become the first U.S. state to accept taxes and cryptocurrency in just a couple of years. The new law states, A taxpayer may pay their income tax liability using a payment gateway such as Bitcoin, Litecoin, or any other recognized cryptocurrency using electronic peer-to-peer -peer systems. It then clarifies that the Department of Revenue shall convert cryptocurrency payments to United States dollars at the prevailing rate after receipt and shall credit the taxpayer's account with the converted dollar amount actually received, lest any fees or costs incurred for conversion. This is huge. They're saying, you know what kind of president this is going to state? Where a state government is actually accepting Bitcoin as payment? That's going to throw into a tailspin all the, the, the other federal government officials and the banks are saying Bitcoin ain't real money. How can you claim that if I was a lawyer in a different state, you're going to win every case. You can just point to Arizona. Hey, Arizona is, to, is accepting it as real money. Obviously, it's real money. You're setting a precedent here. So a similar bill was voted down in New Hampshire two years ago with... I uh, lost my place there. Yeah. Two years ago, uh, a similar bill was voted down in New Hampshire two years ago with concerns that the state would have to bear responsibility for converting the cryptos on volatile markets. Its sponsor, New Hampshire State Representative Eric Schlein, or Schlein explained that there would be no cost and no risk to the state as conversion would be automatic. That's true. It's not like they're going to they take the coin and they sit on it for a month or a week. It's happening automatic instantly. Another draft law, HB 2601, is expected to regulate crowdfunding through initial coin offerings in Arizona. At first it, its first reading in the House of Representatives is scheduled for June 2nd, 2018. And the second reading should take place on July 2nd. It is sponsored by Representative Jeff Winninger. He's a Republican who is also among the authors of the tax amendments. Recently, he told Fox that state legislators want to send a signal to everyone in the United States. See what I said there? How setting a precedent? That Arizona is going to be the place to be for digital currency technology. Huh. Might be time to buy some property in Arizona. Now, and others have taken the same road. Tennessee is another state that may soon legalize cryptocurrencies and crypto payments. A proposal to do that has come with a bill that would officially recognize cryptocurrency financial transactions and smart contracts in the state. It would also protect ownership rights of information secured on blockchain networks. That we are not just competing with other states in this space. We are competing with the whole world. Finally. Finally, we're starting to see. <laughs> this. It's like, remember what we say about what Bruce Lee says? The river can't be stopped. One by, it's like a domino effect. One by one. They're all going to come falling down. Just like the whole legalized marijuana movement. State after state is legalizing it. The federal government might be slow on the uptake, but the states are taking matters in their own hands. This is an interesting development. It says the Nashville lawmaker, or oh, that's what Tennessee House Representative Jason Powell said. This is both, and he's a Democrat, so you got both Democrats and Republicans on the same page here on the state level. So, Jason Powell said after a presentation on blockchain technology last month, 
The Nashville lawmaker also called for adopting a meaningful legislation in the volunteer state as reported by the Tennessean. It is really important to say that Tennessee is supportive of this technology and we want to be a leader in this innovation. Smart. Local authorities have already indicated that money transmitter licenses will not be required to trade cryptocurrencies in the state. That's different than in Chicago. That's huge. Wyoming may also become a crypto-friendly jurisdiction and is already taking steps to improve its attractiveness for startups from the sector. Several drafts have been introduced in the state legislature. Respective committees have passed two of them, and they are now ready for the House of Representatives. According to Bill 0070, a person who develops, sells, or facilitates the exchange of an open blockchain token is not subject to specify securities laws. If the token can be exchanged for goods and services, the legislation it exempts exchanges from regulations applicable to brokers and dealers. Exemptions from cryptocurrency traders and transactions are also included in a draft to amend the Money Transmitter Act. Kansas and New Hampshire are two other states that have passed legislation with crypto-related exempts in their money transmitter regulations. In Texas, companies are not licensed when offering custodial exchange services to in-state customers, and Montana has no applicable money transmission laws. Authorities in Nevada have promised to create favorable conditions for startups working with blockchain technologies. Most other states have yet to adopt their regulatory frameworks. So this is good news. This is good news. So yeah, the empire came out hard at the beginning of this year. Putting a clamp down on anything crypto worldwide. But... You're starting to see the, the the fight back, you know, like the return of the Jedi. So we've got Nevada, we've got Tennessee, New Hampshire, Wyoming, Montana, all want to be the innovator leading this space because they feel they're competing with the world, even Kansas. So the flyover states are trying to be attractive, huh? Good, good. All right. And the last article, who likes Ellen DeGeneres? <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres is down with Bitcoin. I didn't see the episode, but she spent a lot of time on this. You're right, Elaine. Brothels paving the way. <laughs> yes, I said this too. The moment you see the oldest profession in the world. The prostitutes accepting Bitcoin as payment, then you better believe it is real money because they ain't going to be accepting no monopoly money. Try to pay a prostitute a monopoly money and see what happens. They're accepting Bitcoin as payment, it's the real deal. All right. So, U.S. daytime television chat show Queen Ellen DeGeneres featured Bitcoin. In a recent segment, wandering aloud about its fundamental mysteries with her enthused audience. And, lo and while it was a funny look at the cryptocurrency, she managed to expose an often missed demographic to cryptocurrency. Baby goat loving moms. One thing I am down with right now that I think everybody is learning about is Bitcoin. I would rephrase that statement to say that I think everybody is hearing about because everybody is not learning about it yet. They're hearing about it is Bitcoin. Who's heard of Bitcoin? Who can explain what Bitcoin is? Liar, she says. Nobody knows how it works. Nobody. Host Ellen DeGeneres 60 said incredulously during her eponymously named program. The Ella DeGeneres Show is enjoying its 15th year as a daily entertainment talk show, and with over 2,500 um, yeah, 2, episodes under its belt, 
the Warner Brothers television distributed program has racked up 59 daytime Emmy Awards, eclipsing the mighty Oprah. Ellen kicks so much ass, Telepictures signed the show through 2020, even launching a game show component. Joseph Young Twitter said, Bitcoin on the Ellen show? Is 2018 the year cryptocurrency market goes truly, truly mainstream? Everybody is talking about Bitcoin. Nobody understands it, Miss DeGeneres continued. Didn't I say that too? Why are we launching an education platform? 50% of Americans are hearing about Bitcoin now. So if you're at work, you know, at least half the people in the office have heard of it. Some might be talking about it at the water cooler. But only 5% of the population has bought any of it. And only half of the pop half a percent of the population even understands it. So she says, it's like a plot twist in a confusing movie. When you're watching a movie and your friends act like they know what's going on. And you're like, yeah, I do too. And then you're like, what the hell is every... And I have no idea. All I know is that Bitcoin is either worth $20,000 or nothing. That's what I know. It's like a digital antiques roadshow. You're just standing in line and you have no idea until you get there. And that's true. That's why I said for those of you that get educated in this space and you're out and about in the field. like I call it the field. You're out and about in society and you're talking to people. If you show a modicum of knowledge on Bitcoin... You are the center of attention. I told you about my field experiment when I was at the hearing doctor. The nurse was paying me no attention. What's, she never even looked up from her computer screen till she started asking certain questions. So wait a minute, what do you do for a living? I work from home. Yeah, I noticed that. You're always in here like in the... You know, during work hours, you, you, you're able to take all that time off of work. I work from home. Oh, what do you do from, from working from home? Oh, I invest in cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies? Well, like Bitcoin? Yep. Full attention from that point forward. Full attention. Girl wanted to, Well, I'm not going to say what she wanted to do. This is being recorded. All I'm saying is it gets attention. If you show that you have any form of knowledge of Bitcoin, you are the center of attention. So, though the show commands a daily audience nearing 3 million, Miss DeGeneres has earned her spot among comedy greats. She began in the 80s as that rather rare bird, a female stand-up comedian. In the 90s, she had the chance to, in two situation comedies, neither of which went as well as her present gig, but she forged new ground by publicly announcing her sexual orientation. In 2008, she married girlfriend Portia de Rossi. She is now considered a leading advocate for sexual minorities. She is also famous for her voice work in the Pixar franchises Finding Nemo and Finding Dory, and for having hosted the Emmys, Grammy Awards, and the Academy Awards. She was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Obama. Barry Silber says, Thing I never expected to say. The Ellen DeGeneres Bitcoin Rally. The self effacing comedian explained, But they didn't call me Economics Ellen in high school for nothing. They called me that because I failed economics. So I did a little research, and I am going to the best of my ability explain how bitcoin works okay first the article i read said bitcoin is a digital is a decentralized digital currency now to be honest i don't know what that means think about that people may hear these words but they have no idea what they mean they hear blockchain they hear dlt they hear digital, it's decentralized digital currency. They don't know what all that means. But here's what I'm going to do. I am going to explain it, and I think we're all going to get this. Pretend like Bitcoin is a goat. Okay. Now, it's adorable, right? Everyone agrees it's adorable. And you want to pick it up, and you want to pet it, right? But you can't because it's not there. 
It doesn't exist for the fact on for except on the internet. Just like Bitcoin is digital currency and a visual of a baby goat appeared on a large screen behind her. You're probably thinking, Ellen, if I cannot physically touch it, where do I keep my Bitcoin? In a digital purse? Which is a funny idea, but it's kind of true. You keep it in a digital wallet, okay? Miss DeGeneres said, showing pictures of the popular Toast wallet. And the digital wallet can either be apps on your phone or, a t or tiny hard drives like this. She elaborated on what appears to be a cold storage product, looks like a treasure, from le or ledger, from ledger flashes on the same screen. Which is a really good idea because you wouldn't feel safe with your life savings on a piece of plastic that can go into the washing machine. And it sounds like a Jimmy Kimmel prank, but it's not. A digital wallet holds all of your Bitcoin. Unlike your real wallet, which holds receipts and punch cards for free Jamba Juice. Teasing is certainly welcome in the Bitcoin space, especially after the last few months. Though its price is bouncing back, many Bitcoiners were starting to wonder what would become of the asset. It would be hard to beat 2017's success. However, if popular acceptance and acknowledgement from the likes of 50 Cent, JC, and now Ellen are any indication, the ecosystem might be in for another crazy ride. Miss DeGeneres ended the segment by suggesting, I also found out Bitcoin operates sort of like the stock market. So say you, so say you own one Bitcoin, and when you bought it, it was worth $10,000, okay? And then for some reason, Bitcoin becomes worth $20,000. You just doubled your money. Personally, I'd rather own a baby goat, but that's just me. Basically, you invest in Bitcoin, you'll either be a millionaire or totally broke. <laughs> that's Ellen. You know, what, you know what phase we're in right now, For if you guys want to really understand this. Think back to the early 90s, late 80s. Bill Gates went on a, a worldwide tour when he was talking about Windows and he was talking about email, and he was talking about the internet. And the news outlets that were picking this stuff up, famously saying, can somebody explain to me what the internet is? What's the internet? That wasn't that long ago. <laughs> I was 14, I think 13, 14 years old when that was going on. I remember that. I remember in high school, when we had what's called the intranet, where the computers in our class and in each classroom and the libraries were connected to each other, so it wasn't the full-on AOL internet yet, but it was because the Pentagon has been using this for for decades. the The computers can talk to each other. The intranet. I remember in college in the computer lab, and nobody was was doing work. Everybody was playing Doom. Now, if you know what that video game is, you know what I'm talking about. Now imagine about 25 computers that in their own little internet all hooked up together in the computer lab and everybody is playing the game against each other. That was our version of MMO. That means massive multiplayer online. That was our version, the int intranet. And then I remember they were talking about email. And with email, I remember the news saying, why would somebody... What's an email? And Bill Gates was like, well, you're going to be able to send messages to each other through email. So you don't have to send letters in the mail anymore. And they laughed at that. They're like, well, I can't pick it up. I can't touch it. I can't send a package in an email. And Bill Gates said, well, we're not talking about sending packages, physical packages, but we're talking about digital packages that could hold so much more information. And at that time, my current wife, we're talking about 1994, 95, maybe even 96, because long, she was from Philadelphia and I'm from California, and we met in college. And when we go home, the long distance back then was so expensive that we couldn't afford to call and have long conversations on the phone. We couldn't afford that. 
We would write letters to each other. My oldest son, he's 19, born in 1998, laughs at us because we still have those letters. He laughs at us. He's like, you guys wrote letters? Yeah, and we had to put it in the mail. It's like one conversation would take two weeks. Whereas now, because of instant messaging and email, one conversation could take five minutes, two minutes. You know, the technology is moving so fast to the point now people have cell phones and don't even use it to talk on the cell phone. I find it annoying when I my phone will text me, shoot me a direct message. What you calling me for? <laughs> people don't want to talk on their phones anymore. But that's just how fast technology is moving. And we're in that same era right now when we're talking about the Bitcoin. You are still an early adapter. Less than 5% of America, Americans even own crypto. Less than half a percent of those even understand it. And that's why we have are launching our platform, Cryptogenics Education Platform, to educate you on this space. Hold your hand and walk you through the basics. That is the most valuable. People tell me all the time, hey, Brandon, you know, I got some money. What should I invest in? Where should I put my coins? The fact that you have to ask me that question tells me that the first thing you need to invest in is education. Education. Because when you're educated, you don't need to ask that question anymore. I don't need to pick up the phone and call somebody. Hey, uh, you know, what what, what what, investment should I invest in? What, what coin should I invest in? I know I'll just go to CoinMarketCap right now. I'll look at which coins that I see that's rising. I can look at the history and see how their past has been and figure out, well, at this current rate, they might grow 400% this year. So it might do me good if I invest 10 grand. And then it grows 400% in the next eight months. You won't need to ask those questions. You will know. You will know how to move in this space. The education is the most important. It's more important than everything. More important than the ICOs. It's more important than trading bots. It's more important than trading itself. Because it's the knowledge. It's more important than owning mining machines. What do you do if the market changes? Do you have? Do you know when to move? Do you know how to adapt? Do you know how to ch change? Do you know when to take a risk and when not to? Doesn't matter how much money you have. I started with one hundred dollars, but the education I had has made tenfold that, more than tenfold. The amount of money I had was irrelevant. I know people that invested a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars with no education, and ultimately they end up losing it all because they're not educated on this space. When you have the education, you can write your own check. This is the wild, wild west right now with no regulation, no cops and rob. Well, there are robbers, but no cops. Yeah, well, they're trying to be cops. The government. But the education is your key. That is your wealth. That's why I strongly advise invest in your education first and everything comes next. That's like when I remember basketball. First two weeks, we didn't even touch a basketball. In fact, we weren't even inside the gym. We were outside running, getting our cardio up, getting our conditioning up. I didn't understand it at the time. I hated the coach. But by the time we went into the gym, we had the energy, we had the cardio to be able to run up and down the court repeatedly. Then another week, we're in the gym. We still don't even touch a basketball because we're learning what's called the fundamentals, the basics. This is what's wrong with the NBA today. These cats that aren't finishing in college, getting that, 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 that skill set in, they lack the fundamentals. It's obvious. Look at basketball from the 90s. Even better, I'll go back to the 80s. Look at basketball from the 80s and compare it to today. These guys are more talented today. But they did not, they do not have the fundamentals and the basics down like the old school guys do or did.
So learn the basics and the fundamentals of this space first. Make your, your riches second. So that's it for free knowledge today from Bitcoin Brandon. I will not be doing a late night crypto talk. Well, it depends. If I do it, I'll do it early because I'm going to go see Black Panther again. That's <laughs> 9 p.m. Eastern show at 6 o'clock. I'm going to that. So if I do do a late night crypto talk, it'll probably be around 8, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. my time. We'll see. But I got to go see Black Panther again. That that movie's motivating. That's going to be, why well, wait till it comes out on DVD. Anytime I'm feeling down or something, that's always, you know, I'm always going to have that playing on circulation in the background on a loop. <laughs> You you understand what I'm talking about. So with that, thank you guys for joining us this morning. You have a great weekend. And until next time, Bitcoin Brandon out. Bye-bye. Crypto Gen X.